Over the last six years we've carried out research that has shown us how walls cope with moisture and wall dry, which I'm going to introduce you to, actually generalises that research to a whole range of applications and locations through New Zealand. This is the laboratory where we measure the leakage performance of claddings and the flashing systems and the whole wall. Uh, basically what we've got here is a big pressure box with spray nozzles on the back wall and by increasing the pressure in the box that simulates wind pressures we're able to measure the leakage characteristics of claddings. Another important aspect of the experiments that we've carried out in this building has been to measure the rate at which wet framing dries out and we've used these moisture pins here to measure the extent of that drying process. What we have done is to measure how wall design contributes to the drying time from wet framing because that's an important part. Wall dry is about the weather type performance of walls. In particular it's about how cavities work and how they improve the ability of a wall to deal with moisture. Well the second screen is about rain loads on vertical surfaces of buildings and wind speeds, average wind speeds. So you can see two radial graphs here. This one relates to the rain load on wall facades and that on average wind speeds at roof height. What you're able to do here is to change the location and see the effect that that has on rain load and average wind speeds of roof height. You can also change the season to summer data. You can change the building height up to a maximum of 10 metres and change the extent of eaves. You can see that adding eaves actually uh, reduces rain loads quite significantly. The second display here deals with the ability of a wall to dispose of moisture. So you can see the outline of a building here with around the perimeter a series of bar graphs. So these bars are representing the drying rate from the back of the cladding. Well, there's a result here for the summer that is representing the drying rate from the back of a brick veneer clad wall with top and bottom vents on the west coast in a building that is exposed to the wind. We can change any of these parameters. Uh, we can change the type of cavity to an open rain screen with non-vented battens and you can see the drying rates actually do go down quite considerably. Another set of bar graphs on this screen are representing drying from the framing. So these bar graphs that poke into the building are in the number of days that it takes to dry wet framing down from fibre saturation to, in this case, 20%. We can change that target to 15% if you like, and it, obviously those drying times extend out considerably. Once again, these drying rates depend on where in the country the building is located. Two important things come out of wall dry from this screen. The first is the enormous capacity of ventilation drying on the back of claddings. Uh, if you look at this case here for brick veneer walls, they are dealing with over 100 grams of moisture per square metre per day. That's an enormous drying capacity. The second point that comes out of this is that 
The drying rates from wet framing are not influenced terribly much by whether or not you have a cavity. So the cavity is more about preventing water getting there in the first place than it is about recovering from a wet framing situation. Okay, the final screen here in wall dry is drying rates from the back of the cladding represented here in blue and comparing those with average wetting rates. Now it's terribly difficult to get a handle on water leakage rates through claddings because they depend so much on workmanship and home maintenance over the years. But we have accumulated some data here at Brands that at least allows us to to make some comparison between these two. And that's what's presented here on the screen. So we might, for instance, uh, we're representing here the average drying rate from the back of a brick veneer wall and we're comparing that with the uh, ability of that wall to dry out uh, by ventilation drying. And you can see that the two are pretty well matched. So this wall will cope with moisture leaking through the cladding by ventilation drying no problem. Well, as before, we can change the location and we can change the extent of wind exposure. Uh, we can even change the type of cladding and it's important here to match the type of cladding with the type of water management that might be used. So let's add here an open rain screen with non-vented battens. Now what you can see here is that there are very much, um, there's much more drying capacity here than there is actual rain load coming through to the back of the cladding. So it's a situation where the wall is able to handle many, many times more uh, water entry than is actually um, happening. So it's, it's kind of an ideal situation where by installing a cavity we've actually bought enormous moisture management um, capability. The final point I want to make is that I would like you to remember that wall dry is work in progress. We still have quite a lot of research on aspects of weather type buildings to carry out at brands and so the content of wall dry will get better as time goes on. The second point is that we would welcome any feedback that you might have about how to improve wall dry so it better meshes with the building design process and with getting code compliance on new cavity, new wall designs. Thank you.